no reason for me to say this, but Monster Hunter is freaking awesome. Hearing that the next Monster Hunter game is going to be coming to the PC, I'm hyped as hell. Killing huge creatures and being able to get stronger with their skin and bones is an effective concept that surprisingly never gets old. As expected, anything successful commercially and critically will have its clones, aka PlayStation's All-Star Battle Royale biting off of Super Smash Bros. With Koei Tecmo's track record of being the king of niche Japanese gaming, I was interested to see what they can pull off with Tokiden and Kiwami. Will it be another shameful ripoff or add something unique to the table and challenge Monster Hunter as a legitimate contender? It's a possibility, but right off the bat, Tokiden and Kiwami makes a terrible first impression for PC elitists. First off, there's no cursor at all. Everything is controlled by either the arrow keys or a gamepad for navigation. Second, the game is capped in 30 frames per second. Considering this game looks last gen, there isn't any excuse for this. Third, even after patches, the game crashes at a consistently random basis. Sometimes I can go hours without a single crash, then I can't play the game for the rest of the day because it keeps crashing at the menu screen. The timing of these crashes are so bad too, since many of them happen when battling large monsters. Come on Koei, get your PC ports right. So after you create your character from a somewhat basic character creation, you are introduced in a weird Japanese dream tutorial. It's unique enough as the messages are relative to what you have to do to take the enemy down, which are referred to as Oni. The only question I had was, who the hell is talking to me? Is my character secretly psychotic? Do I go to sleep each and every day to question the fabric of space and time? Before that question is answered, you then wake up and find yourself as a new recruit for the Slayers, who are pretty much badass militia who defend the village from the Oni. Your goal is to prove yourself worthy as you learn about your teammates, the mythos, and the ever-growing threat within. Better than Monster Hunter, Tokiden and Kiwami follows a decent narrative explaining the lore and the world we are in. The game features a good amount of dialogue and cutscenes, and many of the characters you meet have their own backstory. I was impressed to see the story given so much focus on a genre that doesn't really feature strong plots. It certainly isn't groundbreaking amazing, but there is legitimate effort to world and character building. There is also a healthy dose of humor, which unfortunately doesn't always hit. Some of it is clever, while others fall in the category of weird Japanese humor. I honestly feel confused on what exactly is funny about it. These jokes go right through me. You can also tell this game is so Japanese, as you can take baths with other characters to increase your bond with them. Completely unnecessary, but this is what to expect by our eastern friends. Tokiden Kiwami features 9 weapons types to choose from, each offering their own style. I recommend you try out all 9 in the first few missions. My personal favorite is the rifle, since you can mix up various ammo types. Plus, I find it funny being a shooter when swords are still a thing. As expected, the combat makes up a huge chunk of the game. It is easy to learn and easy to master. You have your quick attacks, strong attacks, and critical attacks. As you charge up your weapon meter, you can unleash a special attack and a team special attack as you use it alongside your squad. Missions either boil down to defeating a main boss or defeating a certain amount of monsters or just securing the area. Regardless of the objective, be prepared for a lot of hacking and slashing or shooting if you choose the rifle. The fun part is when you're tasked to take down a large monster, I, I, I mean Oni. All have their own unique patterns and strategy to defeat them, adding a sense of wonder and amazement when a new beast is introduced. In addition, body parts can be sliced or blown off from large Oni, making it all the more satisfying when the killing blow is finally delivered. You can then use these parts to upgrade your equipment and create new weapons and armor. As you defeat Oni and progress through the story, you unlock Mirima who are based off of Japanese history. People like Shingen Takera, Mitsuhiri Akechi, Taira no Masakaro, and a bunch more offer various stat increases to attack, defense, and health. Mirima also provide abilities to aid you in battle, such as recovering your health, trapping the enemy in place, a damage buff, and a few more. While some classes of Mirima are more preferred to others, all are beneficial during battle. For better or for worse, the element of grinding is still there. If you want better equipment, you can definitely get it, but it will take time to get the right part from constantly battling the same monsters over and over. It is definitely rewarding to finally get that giant flaming scaled bird sword, but you will need to put the time and effort to get it. Honestly though, the grinding is more about time. The difficulty is on the low side compared to Monster Hunter. The game is very forgiving as you can get knocked out an unlimited number of times during battle as long as somebody is there to revive you. Plus, your AI companions are very good as they properly dodge and block when appropriate. 
almost too good. Battles that are supposed to be intense and full of adrenaline lose steam without the sense of danger and dread, a sensation that Monster Hunters and Dark Souls gets right. In addition, you don't need to worry about food, sharpening your weapons, buying pickaxes to gain materials, or other things Monster Hunter is known for. You can find them from absorbing Oni or just lying on the field waiting to be picked up. What also adds to the grinding is an unfortunate lack of enemy variety. Later missions are more about facing multiple large Oni in a mission rather than experiencing new monsters and challenges. This makes the late game kind of a bore gameplay wise with the game becoming stagnant outside of the story progressions. Now thankfully there are more ways to receive rare resources. Donating to a shrine and sending your adorable Tenko pet will provide more resources to use for upgrading and creating weapons and armor. Unfortunately, you still need to play missions for this to happen. Not only are there a crap ton of missions available for you to take, but a crap ton of quests are also present. These vary from collect X amount of resources to defeat X amount of monsters. I usually ignore the resource collecting missions as Koku, which is the game's currency, it's your reward, which is pointless since you'll be balling in that cash money boy by that third chapter. After a certain point, you can send a secondary squad to previous missions to get more resources. Depending on your, the squad leader, you will get more of a certain kind of resource. I respect all the attempts Koei Tecmo has made to reduce the grinding, but rare resources will still take some replaying completed missions to find. I mean, they're rare for a reason. Koei Tecmo is one of the most underrated companies when it comes to creating music. All of their games have awesome soundtracks, and this is no exception. With a mix of various Asian, African, and European instruments, Tokini Kiwami has a unique and amazing soundtrack. Whether it is battling large Oni or searching for it, the musical score delivers. Voice acting is all done in Japanese, which I'm fine with, I'll just have to read more. It makes me feel like I'm watching an anime similar to Inuyasha, or another anime I'll never watch but act like I do. Also, I'm not sure why, but some sections are voiced while others aren't. I'm not sure if it was a budgetary reason or what, but it is jarring when two dialogue scenes happen back to back and only one of them has voice acting. Overall, Tokiden Kiwami is a decent clone of Monster Hunter, while differentiating itself enough to be its own game. The lore is interesting enough, the characters are memorable, and the story is really well done. The gameplay isn't too shabby either with a decent mix of weapons and Oni to battle, and a fast paced combat engine to boot. However, if I had to choose between the two, Monster Hunter is my go to game, especially now that it's coming to PC with Monster Hunter World. The late game suffers from missions with the same enemies, too much grinding for the better equipment, and a host of PC port issues. I haven't beaten the game yet and I don't really plan to, so I can only give it a slight recommendation. Hopefully the sequel fares much better, which I heard it does nicely. Thank you for watching as always, please subscribe to my channel and please follow me on Twitter. This is Powerhouse, signing off.